So as you saw from the title, everybody, two weeks after giving us Image Playgrounds, iPadOS 18.2, all the different things that come with Genmojis, and finally that ChatGPT integration, we have iPadOS 18.2 Beta 2. Let's see what's new, if anything at all. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And as you see here, the first thing we see is that this is gonna be a 1.44 gig update in terms of size. So give yourself at least three gigs of internal storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. I am using an M4 iPad Pro to test out all these beta programs. And I'll leave a link down below for all the supported devices when it comes to which one's gonna get iPad OS as well as iOS 18.2 beta 2. And then in terms of the build number, we'll go into our settings here, go into the about section, and you might notice already some differences in here. But if we go into the iPad OS version, we are now on 22C51125 lowercase e, meaning we are getting closer and closer to that RC edition, but definitely keep in mind this probably won't come out until mid to late December for everybody to get 18.2 to the public, but the public beta should be releasing within the next couple of days, so definitely be on the lookout for that one. And then in terms of what's new, this is one of those updates that's gonna be a little bit more on the minimal side when it comes to physical changes, but we do notice a few things. So the first one is that in your settings, all the different icons down here are going to match your tinted icons on your home screen. So you can see here that I'm in dark mode for all of my icons, but if I get out of here and maybe change it up right here, so if I go to edit, change it up to customize, and maybe I wanna do a tinted one, it's gonna change it to this orange hue, and then if I go into my settings, it'll change all those icons to that same orange hue. So it is a nice little continuity feature to make sure that everything does match and match correctly. I'm gonna get out of this because I don't like this look, but if we go to customize, go back to my dark one, you'll be able to see that those icons go back to that dark mode. Now the second thing to take into consideration is that with 18.2 we did get that ChatGPT integration which has been amazing and then depending on when this goes up I do have a video coming out on how to use ChatGPT integrations as well as visual intelligence and how to maximize that but the new addition here is if we go into the ChatGPT section in the settings you can actually sign in which is if you already have a paid account or even if you have an unpaid account in ChatGPT and you wanted to keep a record of your request, then you can do so. And then you also have a couple other options here. So the first one's gonna be this daily limit option. There hasn't been a number or a figure in terms of what that looks like for how many requests or how many calls you can do to ChatGPT. But here there is a limit finally if you have a ChatGPT free version or you're just using whatever Apple's giving you. The next thing you're gonna notice here is if you click on this, Apple is now giving you guys the option to subscribe to ChatGPT Plus for $20 per month, which in my opinion is a little steep, but you do get five times more messages on ChatGPT 4.0 and access to even more advanced models, higher limits for photo and file uploads, image generation, as well as web browsing, and finally more natural real-time conversations with GBT. Again, you can subscribe to that for $20 a month. I'm sure Apple at one point might add this into Apple One as part of that subscription or as part of an add-on. And I'm also curious to know how much Apple takes in terms of their cut on this, probably that 30% but I do have a paid version, I'm just not signed in right now, but it should give you at least priority when it comes to all these calls moving forward because I'm sure once we do get to the public version, all these servers are gonna be inundated with people trying this out, especially in the beginning, so definitely consider that if you want to, but you still have the free version, which for the most part is more than enough. Now the rest of these additions or updates are gonna be relatively small in terms of actual physical and tangible differences, but like I mentioned, there are some new ones. So if we go into our control center and we start to add a widget, we do have the ability to add a new widget called type to Siri. So if you scroll down here, you have the ability to now have a shortcut for this. So if we add this on here, if we click on it, then you're immediately brought into this interface to ask Siri something by typing it out. So that is a new addition to the control center, but of course, if you do wanna reach out, you can just tap on here, double tap here, and then you can start to type the Siri that way as well. So you can avoid that shortcut, but I can see this being a nice little addition. Another one is gonna be in the Find My. This is just a new splash screen, so it does let you know that you can share item location. So get help finding a lost item by sharing the location with an airline or trusted person which is something that's brand new to Find My, so an even better way to find out where your stuff is if it does get lost. So in the Notes app, we got the new image one, which basically takes any text, especially handwritten text and notes, and turns it into an image, but now you can actually create an image with type text by highlighting a set of text. So if I go on here, we highlight that, and then we right click on here, you can actually create an image from here. So if we press create an image, it'll start to pull something out, and it should give me literally what I asked for, a red cat and with a blue house, an orange hat in a pool which I thought is kind of creative. I've never actually seen that before. So it's cool to see that we can now pull up, with even with type text, you can use something like the image one. So this is just image one, but in a different menu option. And then finally, if we go into any kind of format or any text and you open up your keyboard and you open up your emoji keyboard, and then you add the emoji, you do get this new splash screen to create Genmojis, and then it allows you to create an emoji, like I mentioned earlier, with the 18.2 beta one update. 
Just another splash screen to take into consideration. And now the final thing I do want to go over is battery life and how it's been doing. Because with 18.2 it has been pretty good on the Beta 1 front. If we go in here, we're gonna get about four hours of screen on time on this Monday with about 50% use, meaning we'll get about eight to nine hours of overall screen on time when it comes to using this thing. And the M4 iPad Pro has been great when it comes to battery life. Again, four and a half hours with a little over 50% charge. On a day like this one, four hours with about 50% charge as well. So I can get eight to 10 hours of real task intensive type of work and applications before I start to really need to plug it in. And then if I'm even doing something that's less task intensive, like just watching videos or surfing the web, I can get at least 12 hours out of this thing. And then the standby time, as long as I'm not on the Magic Keyboard, the standby time is magnificent. Here's another great example of four hours and 22 minutes with only about 40% battery taken up. So on a day like this one, we can easily get 10 hours. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, this is one of the most incremental beta two updates. Normally from beta one to beta two, we get a few new tangible things, but this one is very minimal. And I think it's because it's about squishing all those bugs, making sure performance is working well, making sure the older models like the 15 Pro and Pro Max are able to handle all the Apple intelligence features, as well as all the other products that are getting Apple intelligence. So I think that's what's going on here. All we really saw was some ChatGPT integrations for the paid version, and then some other little tidbits. But let me know in the comment down below if we missed anything and see exactly what's going on. Maybe we'll do a recap of beta 2 because i'm sure we won't get beta 3 until possibly another two weeks but that'll do it everybody just wanted to give you guys a little psa update so if you made it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so i know you made it to the end and if you want to watch more videos like this one definitely check out one of these videos right here and until next time i'm fernando peace everybody